Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Uh, this is uh, take two, the first video I did of this. I, I talked for nearly half an hour. I couldn't believe how long I talked for. It didn't even seem that long. And talking about ropes, which is the focus of this video, for half an hour, uh, that would just send people to sleep in no time at all. So what I've done is I've gone and had one of these amazing coffees, Carve Coffee Roasters. These uh, I got a few of these as a gift from someone, which is extremely kind of them. And I've drunk a lot of coffee on this lockdown period, uh, but this is absolutely the standout best one I've had. So go and check them out if you want a nice coffee. Carve Coffee Roasters, small startup, new business. So any support is good support. Um, it is honking outside today, so it's an indoor video and we're going to talk about ropes and that coffee has hopefully energised me to talk a little bit uh, more rapidly and succinctly than my first take. So let's get on with it. Just picking up this uh, low stretch rope first off, okay, so you normally hear this referred to as a static rope. All the ropes here have a very similar construction whereby in the middle of it there is a core. That's white, that's soft, that's fragile, but it's really flipping strong. About 80% of the strength of a rope will come from that core. Not very abrasion resistant though, so what it has on the outer is a sheath. On this low stretch rope, the sheath is like super abrasion resistant. It's pretty stiff, so it's not the nicest thing to work with, but it absolutely serves a purpose. So low stretch ropes, they don't bounce around very much by their nature. Uh, they do um, shrink a bit when they get wet, so the best thing to do when you buy a rope, buy it slightly oversized by a meter or two, put it in the bath, soak it, dry it, and it will shrink to your desired size. So if I'm wanting a 50, which is what this is, I'll probably buy like 53 meters, and then it's pretty much guaranteed to stay at 50. 10.5 millimeters, although it's really abrasion resistant, still make sure you protect edges and stuff like that, it's super important. We use it for rigging purposes and for abseiling purposes. We don't use it as a lead climbing rope because it hasn't got that stretch. It would put too much force on gear and you when you fall off, okay? So it's for rigging and abseiling. 50 meters is just a really flexible length that will probably be too long a lot of the time, but you know, if you're rigging one day, the next day you want to abseil into Gogarth or something and you know, Castle Helen there, then you'll need a 50. So it, it just sort of future proofs you by getting a 50. You're never going to carry a rigging rope that far uh, in normal circumstances. The question I probably get most about ropes is what rope should I buy first? I put a link in the description below for an absolute bargain of a rope, which is £55 for a 50 metre single. That is an absolute steal, so check that out if you're after like a, a fairly chunky workhorse rope or a first rope. It's really similar to this one. It's 9.8 millimeters, it's 50 meters again, and it is a single rope, so stretchy. We can do all sorts of climbing on this, from trad climbing to sport climbing to indoor climbing. It's all good. Same construction again, it just stretches more, so we can use it for proper climbing. You could still abseil on it and stuff like that, but it's designed for actual real climbing. 9.8 is quite chunky for a single these days, and that's good because it means it will last a long time. And if it's your first rope, it's quite confidence inspiring to have a nice chunky rope. They're also a bargain, not dry treated or anything, I'll come on to that in a minute. Like I say, you can do all sorts of climbing on it. I've got tons of ropes, like probably over 30 ropes in my cupboard below because I've got ones for all different niches of climbing. But as a starter rope, that is like super versatile. So I would get something exactly like that. And I, like I say, 55 quid in that link below, flipping bargain that. A chunky single rope, it's even fatter this one. It's like 10.2, you can feel the weight difference even though it's only a 40. Same properties as that, super hard wearing. I use that for indoor climbing. Don't need anything fancy for indoor climbing, just so it'll take a bit of abuse, lots of falls and all that kind of thing. It's a bit shorter because I don't need a longer one. Someone like V12 usually has a bargain wall rope, so check them out uh, if you want something like that. Still on singles, we're getting uh, a little bit more Gucci here. We're getting into something like this, which is a Beal Joker, and this is 9.1 millimeters. That means it's going to be lighter. That means it's not going to last as long either. It also means you're going to have to pay more for it. That's the way climbing kit goes, isn't it? Lighter uh, means more expensive. Still a 50, because that for me is just the most versatile length. It's a single rope, it's nice to use, and it's also dry treated, and that's important, right? Do you go climbing in the rain a lot? Personally, no. But if you do, and I often do for work, then 
ropes soak up a lot of water, like flipping 50 meter long sponges basically. Doesn't mean you can't use them, they might be a bit slicker when they're like that, but what it does mean is they'll be flipping heavy because they soak up so much water. In summer, he says looking out the window at some disgusting summer weather in Wales. Does that matter too much? Perhaps not. In the winter it does matter because if your ropes get wet just from the snow and stuff like that, or the rainy walk-in before you get to the snow line, and they freeze, then you're in trouble because the ropes just become almost impossible to use. So winter ropes, definitely get them dry treated, okay? So a skinny single, love it, but it's not gonna last as long as them chunky singles, even though it's dry treated. I'll come on to a little bit more about dry treated in a second. Still on single ropes, let's lift this one up. This one is one of my sport specific ropes. It's 80 meters, this one. In the UK, 50 meters is the ideal length for nearly everywhere. There's exceptions, of course, there are some places require longer. Uh, on a sport sense, some places will need a 60. However, this one's 80 because I take it abroad a lot, Spanish sport crags and stuff. A lot of them require longer ropes to lower down in a one and you don't need the faff of anything shorter. So an 80 meter rope will just work at nearly every crag there is. It's 9.5 this one, so not super skinny, not super fat. So it's a bit of an all rounder It will take a lot of falls, it will last well and all that kind of thing, but it's not gonna be super heavy. If you imagine doing a 40 meter pitch at a sport crag, Actually, even if it's going in a fairly straight line, so there's not much drag off the kit, 40 metres of rope beneath you is quite a, a weight actually, and that can make things a bit harder. So, you know, you're balancing that with a light rope. Some people might well have a, an 80 metre, even chunkier one for working a route, and a skinnier one for the, like the red point effort. So there's um, you know, pros and cons to these things, isn't there? It's in a rope bag, this one, so it's worth mentioning, you should always, always, always tie the spare end of your rope into the rope bag or the tarpaulin that's on it. Or if you haven't got a rope bag, then just tie a knot in it. Too many people have been lowered off the end of their rope and had accidents, you know, super experienced people. So do tie the end of your rope into something or tie a knot in it. For sport climbing, I always take a rope bag. It's just easy to pull out the cupboard, chuck it in, in the rucksack, uh, and then you've got the tarpaulin to save your rope getting covered in muck and all that kind of thing which is the other good thing about a dry treated rope. Not only do they stop the rope soaking up moisture, they uh, help to stop dirt and grime getting into your rope, uh, which obviously just makes it not quite so nice to use, but it also wear quicker because that dirt is rubbing on the gree gree or on the quick draws or on the lower off or stuff, so it will wear your rope quicker. So dry treated ropes are better in a couple of ways, but as I said, you will pay more money for them. The last ones I've got down here are still in their packets. 9 uh, trad half ropes. I haven't been able to do much trad this year because of the old lockdown, so that's why they're still in their bags. Skinny half ropes, right, half ropes, also known as doubles, not known as twins. Twins are something different that I'll come on to in a second. Halves or double ropes are designed to be used together, okay? So you have to take two. So individually, the ropes are lighter, but you've got to take two of them. But you can share that with your mate, one each kind of thing. These ones, 50 meters again, you're getting a theme with my standard ropes, 50 meters. 8.1 millimeters in diameter, so pretty skinny. You can get skinnier for sure. If I was to buy my first ever set or recommend to someone buying their first ever set of halves, I'd get 8.5 millimeters there or thereabouts. It's that balance between durability and weight again, really. It's also more confidence inspiring, remember, to have a fatter rope tied into you sometimes. Half ropes are great. You clip one into one set of runners on the left, for example, one into one on the right. So even if the route is zigzagging, you still get nice smooth lines of rope, like train lines. If you're on a single, the ropes would be zigzagging, weren't they? So you've got to work harder at extending runners and stuff because not only does that add rope drag, it also increases the chance of gear lifting out, which we don't want. So half ropes are flipping ideal for trad, especially, uh, well, in most, I was gonna say, especially in the UK, but in most countries really, because a lot of our routes don't follow like dead straight cracks and stuff like that. There's other advantages. It could be that one rope gets damaged in a rock fall or something. Well, you've still got the other one winning. You can also do full length retrievable abseils. So if you're on a single rope, so it's 50, you double it up because you've got to pull it down after, it's only 25 meters, that's not a lot, is it? With these, you've got 100 meters of rope with you, so you 
to join the two ends, you've got a full 50 meter abseil ace. If you get into trad climbing, at some point you'll progress from a single two halves, okay? A little bit more complicated in terms of belaying, in terms of clipping the right bits, in terms of setting up belays. Not loads more complicated, but it's why I suggest learning on a single and progressing to a trad rope. 50 again, pretty standard. The only time I'd really want 60s for half ropes is when I'm doing winter stuff in Scotland. Sometimes belays are buried under snow so you don't find the right spot to stop at or you decide that it's kind of safer to run two pitches together so the 60 gives you a bit more flexibility there. In a trad sense, summer rock climbing, just find that actually all the extra 10 meters does means you're pulling more in each time when you're taking in the slack. So for me, it's a bit of extra faff but not much gain, okay? So 50s for me. I mentioned twins. I don't have any twins, don't use them because um, we just don't use them a lot in the UK, like I said. They have some of the advantages of half ropes, right? But the difference is you clip both ropes into each runner. So you might still get the zigzags, so that's why they're more suited to fairly straight lines. But you get the advantages of full length abseils, and if one is damaged, hopefully the other one isn't. So there's some pros to that as well. A little bit more niche, I suppose. A few other things to think about then. When you buy a rope or look at it in the shop, you'll have a few other bits of information. So you'll have the diameter, the length, the name, and everything like that. You have the number of falls it can take. Google that because it's not as straightforward as it seems. You'll have the impact force, how much force gets put on that top runner that you're falling onto. Lower, the less force goes onto that. You'll have the amount the rope stretches under a certain weight. You have the weight per meter. Uh, you'll have the sheath slippage, uh, zero on this one. You'll have whether it's middle marked or not, this one is. And you'll have the EN numbers. Make sure you buy a proper reputable brand. Don't buy some unknown stuff on Amazon because, oh, crikey, you could be getting literally anything, okay? Go and Google some of those if you're unclear. Otherwise, if I go into those, the video will be even flipping longer. Right, lastly, what have we had so far? We've had low stretch ropes, your, your static stuff for rigging and abseiling. We've had single ropes of different varieties. We've had half ropes. We've mentioned twin ropes. There's a fifth one that I want to mention, which is this one. I've said it's a single, but actually it's a triple rated rope. So you can use this as a single. You can use it as a half. You can use it as a twin. All right, so it gives you some options. Again, funnily enough, you're gonna pay more for that option as well. There's a few different uh, triple rated ropes out there. Do you need one? Well, it gives you some flexibility. For me, in a work sense, I really like it because often I have two clients with me so they can have a rope each and it's a, a fully rated single rather than one person on one half, one on the other half. Not quite so keen on that idea personally. It just gives me options at the crag, so I really like the idea of a triple rated rope. We can get a bit more niche, of course, as well. If you want a rope purely for scrambling, you want it light, you probably want a single, you probably want it dry treated because of the weather you might be going out in. I might have this, but I might have a 30 metre rope, I might have a 40 metre rope. You know, you've got choices to make, haven't you? You've got alpine ropes, you probably want skinny halves normally, but or super skinny triple rated one. There's so many options, isn't there? But hopefully that's covered the basics of it. Worth just mentioning rope care, read the manufacturer's instructions as to how they say you should wash it. If in any doubt, chuck it in a bath with just warm water, swill it around a bit, job done. Most ropes you can use um, certain chemicals with them, but check out what you can use. You can get specific rope wash stuff. If you put them in the washing machine, I daisy chain them. Rather than just put it in in a single strand chucked in, what you'll end up if you do that, you'll end up with a massive knotted ball of rope which takes you about an hour to undo the twists and tangles. I've done it, I've been there, I will never do it again. I daisy chain the ropes in a few strands, chuck them in, then you can pull them out and they're tangle free and nice and clean. Because ropes get salty, ropes get dirty, so they will need a wash at some point. It's worth reading your manufacturer's little booklet that comes with them as to how long you should keep that rope because it's different for each manufacturer as to what they suggest. I wish my ropes last as long as manufacturers suggest because I use my ropes a lot, so they just don't last that long, they get a bit abused. So keep checking your ropes, you know, are there any um, cuts out of the sheath? Can you see the core time to retire? So, you know, if it just gets a bit fluffy, that might be okay. Ask someone who's more experienced if you're in any doubt at all, okay? Well, there you go, Ropes 101. Please do fire away with any questions. As always, I'm happy to answer them as best I can. Hopefully that was less than 30 minutes. I reckon about 15, maybe, something like that. Um, 
like I say in every other video as well, please find us on the internet, find us on Facebook, different stuff goes on there, sometimes some bargains that they find on the internet, other times nice climbing pictures, whatever it might be. If you've liked this video, click the like button, smash the subscribe button, it's massively appreciated. As always, thanks very much for watching, more videos coming up very soon. Keep dancing with the